Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 171. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is the wonderful and beautiful Kyle Bailey. Hi. Happy to be here. And also joining me is the king of burps, Ian Gibson. I don't know what you're talking about. I, well, you didn't hear anything. It literally didn't get picked up on the mic. I just saw you burp. So everyone's going to be know. really confused. I'll go put in a burp noise sound effect. Thank you. Just to really God embarrass bless. you. It'll be like. Thank God for mute buttons. Thank yeah, God. Thank God. God bless them. Thank God. Um, speaking of the mute. Did I tell you one time? It reminds me one time uh, in the days when people used to work in offices. Mm. Uh, I was in the office and I was had my headphones on listening to music or something and I let out a big old fart and then I was like <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> I'm in the office and I'm probably the only one wearing headphones oh that's <laughs> wonderful <laughs> that's so funny what a nightmare <laughs> um yeah that just solidified you in everyone's eyes uh folks we're here to talk about video games we're here to talk about all sorts of wonderful things uh the one thing i want to talk about this week is uh last weekend i went to the the great city of atlantic atlantic city uh a beautiful place here in new jersey where you can just want to uh see scary you, people uh, all the time you oh, didn't gosh. invite me to the strip club i was I a know little, i was a little upset yeah i know you know actually it was a super last minute trip uh so and i was like you know things have lined up where i didn't have anything to do this weekend i guess i'll go um i um lost two hundred dollars i but i had set Where'd aside three hundred dollars to gamble and now i don't gamble karen gambles uh enjoys gambling um and her parents do but i was she was like Generous. i'm t- gonna take three hundred dollars and i was like okay i'll t- also take three hundred dollars um so i lost 200 and then uh you know i i i I rode that last 100 all the way back up to 200 and then all the way back down to 100 and then all the way back up to like 108 and i said you know what that's good with me and uh, i made it out there i had an extra hundred dollars which is the right way to view that because i could have lost 300 dollars um using that unemployment well yeah it's good unemployment they they you know (laughs) don't tell the government um but uh yeah i was i literally don't i've never been to atlantic city it was ian warned me a little bit before i went there it's 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 a place okay i think so let me let me let me preface this a little bit by saying i've been to atlantic city twice but as i was warning you about how like run down and trashy and i wouldn't say sleazy it really is just run down i realized mm. i hadn't been there in almost 20 years and so i was like maybe it's better <laughs> so i'm curious to hear did it actually get better or is it just still pretty pretty terrible i think it is closer <laughs> to the pop culture so pop culture atlantic city uh real atlantic city isn't that much of a disappointment from that it's not that okay but it is it is it's obviously not the heyday of atlantic city so like you knew that already but it's not the worst place ever the biggest problem is there is smoking sections in the casino and just everywhere smells like cigarettes constantly and you're just like Mm, oh god um i would say i think it sounds like it's gotten better honestly yeah. i think vegas is worse i think the movie image to actual vegas is a much bigger gap like vegas in movies is like oh. a rich cool people's place where you make money and vegas in reality is kind of sad in a lot of places and then there's for, some uh, of the places that are happy and rich well because for us for us it was the opposite because we were kind of in this weird position where my family lived in arizona in the late 90s and we went to Vegas like three times because it was like a four hour car ride. And we and we and we enjoyed it because there was enough like entertainment for the family. The buffets were cheaper back then and it was fancy enough and et cetera. And it was fun and nice. And we were like, let's go to Vegas, you know. And like I said, we did it like three times in three years. And then we got to the East Coast and we're like, oh, Atlantic City. And we went there once. And within like two hours, we were like, this place <laughs> fucking blows. Like, oh, this yeah. is not Vegas at all. But I more of mean, like, I think it's the opposite now. Like modern day Vegas, I, last time I went there was just like, I don't know. I felt like you could see more holes in the like, like it, yeah. it, it will never live up to what Las Vegas is in pop culture and movies where I think Atlantic City 
could if it tried. Okay. Um, gotcha. And I, I don't think Vegas will ever get it. It's because those people who flock to it are hoping for that, but they're like not ever going to be that. Anyways, um, but it was fun. I, I had a good time. I, we did some of those electric indoor go karts. That was super fun. Mm. Um, uh, I was using my, I was seeing the Gran Turismo racing lines. Yes. And um, my only problem with it is A, those carts are not meant for people six feet and over. And yes. B, uh you can't hit the brake and the gas at the same time uh and also the oh. brake is one Weird. foot and the gas is the other foot yes so As my cart be. kept shutting down because i would accidentally put my foot a little bit on the brake and the brake in those carts completely turns off accelerate like the accelerator oh, so it'll just crap. shut it down so you won't be going anywhere and you'll look down and the screen just says break on and you're like ah oh, damn it so that was the only thing <laughs> like sucks. i kept coming out of turns and i wasn't accelerating because my foot was resting on it a little bit that was my only issue but other than that those things go 25 miles per hour and in an indoor We're little fast. track you're just like i'm gonna die like i'm gonna roll this thing and die like this is f1 yeah. here we go um so good so that was super fun uh and then the one night we ate at the hard rock cafe they had uh three guys doing you it was the rainforest cafe no Dang, it was a, you missed out. I, I know i know i was sad <laughs> um but it was two guys with dueling pianos and a drummer and they were just like doing requests and stuff and like they did um god what what the, i can't remember what the nickelback song is but they did a nickelback photograph. song that was pre- I, I might have been photographed and then they did is it ever ever long which they did a uh, a pretty good version of that so it was a fun it was a fun time in ac it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be <laughs> as someone who who doesn't okay. sin um but you know it ended up being a pretty good time uh so, all things so considered. i I have a I have a a long history of weird and wacky stories at Atlantic City because I've consistently grew up within 45 minutes of that place and I th- I think it's time to tell this story. Okay. My I'm going to I'm going to give you the story in a sentence and if you want to know more you can ask. My dad ran someone over on the Atlantic City boardwalk. Okay, yeah, yeah, because I, I he was in a car. Yeah, he was in a truck. Story. Okay, oh my right. God. Story. <laughs> So, okay, my dad, uh, when he was uh, able to work, he was an HVAC technician. Um, he worked for a company called Train, Tozer Train, back in the day, and they had mm-hmm. obviously these big work vans, uh, trucks that that would drive around and fix stuff. So he got called to one of the casinos he was like the guy who would go and fix stuff at atlantic city like anywhere in the casinos they would call my dad um so he's on his lunch break i think or he was like working and he worked through his lunch break he needed to stop and eat something context my dad is also a type 1 diabetic so my dad is sitting in his truck and he when you have a low blood sugar as a type 1 diabetic it's way worse than someone n- normal going hypoglycemic you can get visions, you can kind of black out, you can get like all these crazy things. For me, I get really sweaty and my heart starts pumping and I get really, really thirsty and hungry. For my dad, it manifests in that he kind of just goes in and out of consciousness. So he's sitting in his truck and he's parked on some kind of like an access ramp um, so he could get around to back to where the chillers were. He's sitting in his truck and then all of a sudden he blinks and he's driving like 30 miles an hour down the Atlantic City oh, boardwalk. My God. Um, and uh, <laughs> he thankfully didn't kill anyone. No one died, but he hit this woman. I think he broke her arm or broke her leg or something like that. And the the police caught up with him. I think he crashed or like he managed to pull over or something like that. And they like beat the shit out of him. Like they they thought that he was like on drugs, that he was like yeah. going crazy. And wow. they 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 laid into him. Come to find out. Uh, he was, you know, having a medical emergency and he wasn't uh, aware or able to control his facilities. And the woman who he hit sues him. They go through this whole long court process and they finally get to the point where they put my dad on the stand. And apparently, according to my dad, this woman's lawyer was like awful, like like 
was oh, terrible and was was really like overbearing and kind of yelling at him. And my dad had like his endocrinologist, um, the guy who checked him out from the police station, like they all came and basically said this was not his fault. Like he was he was within within a normal range of, you know, his blood sugars at one point and then sometimes they can just drop. And like we didn't have the technology that we have now back then. So it wasn't like he was able to check his phone and be like, I'm right. at this number. Um, so he ends up winning this case essentially because he convinces the judge and the jury that like it was purely a medical thing. And they really he said that everyone on the jury really hated this fucking lawyer <laughs> that the woman had hired. So he ran someone over on the Atlanta City Expressway and technically got away scot free. <laughs> Not that nice. got away is the yeah. right terminology, but uh, he he uh, he didn't like get sued I into oblivion and. I was able to go to college, which was great. So. Hell yeah. I'm genuinely, I, I like that story, A, because it's funny, and B, because I never thought about people with conditions like that can be declared not at fault because it's so, it's just, it like, you can't be like, oh, no one with diabetes can ever drive now. It's not like being yeah. blind. So that's, that's crazy. And I'm glad no one yeah. was seriously injured. Yeah, like, like, like no, no one died. No one lost their lives. This woman yeah. had like a broken arm or a broken leg and she healed up. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's one of my crazy Atlantic City stories. I have like a yeah. handful of other ones. We'll save for another time. Yeah, I was gonna, but. I was gonna ask you if you had a lot because I knew you grew up around here, and it's like, I, like me uh, growing up around in, near Boston and, and Cape Cod and everything with all like random weird people stories. So, um, I want to hear more of them. If we about once a month, if we can get we'll do, we'll do once once a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll make sure <laughs> uh, someone will write in. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was my Atlantic City City weekend. It was fun. It was a good time. Uh, and I'm up a hundred dollars. So if you know something I can spend a hundred dollars on, um, then Gunpla. Yeah, Gunpla. Okay, well, I'll do that. Perfect. Uh, moving on to the next section of this here television show, this here Twitch TV show uh, is the games we've been playing this week. Uh, Kyle, I'm skipping straight to you because this game was all over Twitter today, everywhere on Twitter, and I just want to know more about Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I knew that you were going to go right for that one, too, which is why I put it second. Um, no, Fallout New Vegas, I had played Fallout 3, Fallout 4. I think I played a little bit of Fallout 2 when I was growing up, but I've never played the original. Never played New Vegas. I had a friend uh, growing up. His name is Dave Thorne. He constantly wanted me to play this game. He was like, it's so much better than Fallout 3. It's so much better. Um, and he's right. Uh, and it it is, at least as far as the story goes. Um, but I did the usual spending two hours downloading mods on Nexus Mods to make sure that the game actually functioned properly. I didn't do any of the weird like cosmetic stuff. It was purely just like um, like gooey stuff and um, uh, just very, very traditional, like make this game run smoothly on modern PC sort of stuff. I forgot because I have not played a Bethesda game other than Starfield, uh, which didn't have mods at the time that I played it in a very long time. I totally forgot how many horny mods there oh, are. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's oh, yeah. so many. Like, I remember Skyrim when when mods finally came out. I was like, oh, cool. Like, I can get better textures and, and like the water will look better. And then that's all I ever did. I never like dived into anything else. Oh, my God, there are thousands of big titty mods and like just yep, better, better, hot, sexier faces and stuff like that. And I, I couldn't believe it when you sort by like popular. It's like sex mod, sex mod, sex mod, the best mod you've ever seen for like user interface stuff, sex mod, sex mod. Sex, and it's just like insane. Yep. Um, But overall, I, I'm only a couple hours into it um, and I kind of started going along the eastern side of the map i i got to that town where the uh all the people are being crucified by the um oh the the i for the slave the slave owner yeah the legend i forget what they're called yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's kaiser's legion caesar's legion yeah and then i quickly turned around because i was like nope don't want to go don't want to go there uh and i went back towards vegas itself um and i met mr house and everything so i nice. i think i kind of like i started going in a different direction than I wanted to. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I like 
it's it's interesting going back and playing that game after having played all the like most of the other fallouts that bethesda have made and how how tight everything still feels and um how easy obsidian made everything just as far as like a story structure like it, it stuff just works and i had i had that stupid encounter that everyone talks about where that guy will run up to you in the most inconvenient time talking about like the blue <laughs> bottle caps or whatever like that and i was like i was literally like um i was trying to kill the person in the uh, there's the sniper position at that one town that's inside of a t-rex mouth oh, boom. And yeah. Like, yeah, and you you talk to him and he's like, somebody killed my wife or got my wife taken or whatever. So you try and find who did that. And I was like about to set the person up for uh, walking out and being shot by the sniper. And like the guy ran up to me and like immediately like ruined my playthrough <laughs> because I was like, oh, well, now I have to like, redo this person. And stuff. Um, but it was, no it's been it's been fun. Novak. For yeah, because no there's no vacancy, in, yeah. which I thought was really, really really oh, really good very clever so but good. yeah it's it's a lot of fun and um uh hold on uh, i was gonna Lieutenant say Drake has been helping with with mods oh they've, they've been good Drake. giving me a lot of mods that's good um with those mods when i back when i was at GameSpot, i was looking at mods for something i can't remember what it was but i like clicked over on it and like immediately started scrolling and saw all the nudity mods and i got that like feeling so when you're mean. like in like a public place and you accidentally <laughs> scroll where you're just like oh i, I wasn't oh, i wasn't looking and i'm like oh wait i was like on an airplane <laughs> and a sex a sex scene yeah. comes up and it's just so like, i installed yeah. them all and i uh, no yeah. but yeah those they're like exactly what you're saying it's like great uh patch brought up to this great uh gui mod uh big titties big hogs like go, yep. go for it Better faces. Uh, there was like so many people obsessed with like remapping the faces of NPCs. I'm like, they're supposed to be in an apocalypse. And also, the one thing I want least in the world is to be naked anywhere near radiation. Like, I don't <laughs> understand why you would want that, but okay. I think there's um, a mod that yeah. makes ghouls like slimier, like like oh like cool, grosser. And I was like, More okay, like okay that's a good use. Ghoulish. That's a good use of the better yeah. skins mod. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's great. Uh, how's it's Animal Well? You want to tell, talk about I, that down the well? Yeah, I mean, I'm only I'm only an hour in, but I've been looking forward to this game ever since I saw it on uh, Donkey's promo thing for for Big Mode, his publishing company. And I gotta say, this game makes a very strong impression within the first within the first five minutes or so. It is all. It's kind of it's. This may be a little bit strange to compare it to, but it's almost like X-Men 97 in that it's more about the vibes than like uh -huh. anything else. Like it's it's really the atmosphere that is so like sumptuous and, and well done. And it's got these sort of bioluminescent neon accents to everything. And um, the engine, which um, Billy Basso, the developer, he developed uh, all by himself. He did the music. He did. I don't think there's any dialogue, but he said previously that he had written dialogue and then got rid of it. Um, all the programming, everything, I think, was done just by one person. And the fact that when you download it, it's only like 30 megabytes, Damn. which is awesome. And like it's so it's just really snappy. Uh, it loads up super quick. There's little nice, very simplified touches for a game that is as as overwhelmingly like luscious in its presentation that really makes sense i exited out of this because i was playing just a few minutes before i had to get the camera set up for this and i hadn't saved in like 30 minutes normally when you go to exit the game it just says like main menu and then you can quit but when i went to the main menu it started flashing red and it said hey your last save was over 36 minutes ago are you sure you Ooh, want to do but it nice. but it didn't it didn't do that when it was like five minutes uh, uh -huh. previously when i yeah. saved so it was like it's like hey like reminding you it's the little touches like that that really make me like love the 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 care that was put into this and clearly this is a game i've seen people uh uh on reviews who have spent like a hundred hours on this game and there's apparently there's levels to it so there's like the base game there's like the get everything 100% the game and then there's a third level that like is there but the um I keep forgetting his name Billy Basso has said like it's actually probably going to take like the community itself to try and figure out 
a bunch of these things because he knows uh-huh. where they are and he knows what they are and they're they're in the game but like you're gonna have to do a lot of trial and error to figure a lot of this stuff out for this third final level so i think it's a game that's going to reward multiple playthroughs obviously and um just i think sumptuous is the best word it's just so detailed and lush and beautifully brought to life um in this in this engine that he's created and i uh um, immediately five minutes into it i was like yep this is a game of the year contender for sure so very uh very excited awesome what yeah, it's um, been getting a, a, a huge amount of buzz with yeah. all the reviews hitting twitter today yeah what kind yeah, of game had it on my it? wish list for months it's a metroidvania in the sense that like you start with nothing and get little things but it's not like an action game it's much more of a puzzler platformer kind of thing um and exploration obviously you mm. you it's non-linear in that you can go any which direction you want um uh, obviously the first like few minutes are like very tailor-made but then it opens up really really wide and i have seen videos of people who like do completely different things than i did and you go and spend like 10 hours in that direction and i'm like well i'm not ready for that and if you can i th- i think it's one of those games where it's like there are there are things you can do from the get-go that you don't realize you can do and gotcha. it's it's a very much like a presentational learning where it's not telling you mm-hmm. anything like it's all trial and error yeah, so there's a this is not a spoiler within like 10 minutes of playing you get this wand and you can create like bubbles and you can jump on the bubbles it's it's in all the trailers i learned that you can actually not just put the bubbles to the side and then they rise you can actually put the bubble down so you can ride the bubble down like a a, mm-hmm. a, a shaft oh. or something like that so um i'm like already seeing potential for like uh, i'm gonna it's gonna allow me to tackle this puzzle that maybe i would have otherwise been stuck at in a completely different way and it's very sort of trial and error test things out and use the tools that are given to you in ways that you might not think you should mm-hmm. be able to use them which i i love it's great um the music's really good too it's it's super like atmospheric and low key but it's there and it's noticeable at certain points even just an hour i think i'm almost a single hour in um it's it's great i i really really like it definitely recommend it and you guys should should check it out when you get the chance yeah that sounds awesome i will check it out yeah uh wonderful i'm glad you're enjoying video games ian gibson are you enjoying video games you know, it's funny you ask because I think the answer for this week is. I don't know. I keep bouncing between games. Um, so here's the games I've been playing. I've been playing some Foundry, which is basically a first person 3D uh, factory game, factory automation game, similar to Factorio, Satisfactory, that whole line of games. Dyson Sphere uh, program. Is it Dyson Sphere program? Dyson Sphere. Yeah. Project. Yeah. Program. 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 Anyways, Program. um, Beep boop. here's the problem I have with Foundry, and I've actually probably put in seven or eight hours into this game. Um, it, it on the positive side, it is borrowing a lot from other games in the genre, like Factorio Satisfactory. Like you can see exact mechanics and things that are being taken from them. And, and I appreciate that. I encourage that in games. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel there's a game in your genre or even in a different genre that has come up with an incredibly uh, great way to do a typical mechanism, then yeah, you should implement that way going forward. Um, The problem with Foundry is I'm pretty sure it is nothing but those borrowed mechanics from other games. I don't, as far as I can tell, it is doing nothing significant and new. It is literally just cobbling together all these other mechanics from other games. And that's frustrating because I was kind of enjoying it, but I got to like four or five hours in and I was starting to look at the tech tree and seeing what what I'd unlocked and what I was about to unlock next. And I was like, there's fucking nothing here that makes me excited to keep going through this tech tree. You know, I I think about something like um, Factorio. They have drones later on. They have a whole combat angle so you can get tanks and you can get uh you can get artillery that you then feed shells and it's like targeted by radar and you're like oh look at all that cool stuff you got satisfactory which has like pneumatic tube system to to travel around the map so that place that always takes you five minutes to get there you just build the tube there and it just sucks you off to that part of the map it's great um 
the foundry has nothing foundry has nothing like that looking through the tech tree i was like oh okay there's the uh there's this there's the coal fired power oh okay there's like the steam power oh okay mm. there's the nuclear power and it's just like it's really upsetting I, I don't know will have you touched foundry at all i played it back on the steam next fest and i, I kind of see where mm -hmm. you're coming from the only thing i thought it did well or cleverly which I, it might be from something else is the like all the power systems were from platforms yes I and do i like hadn't that. seen the game do that before so instead of running yeah. wires to machines you just built a floor that powered anything you put on top of it which i thought was yeah. a was a kind of elegant solution so you didn't in, in a voxel based game so you didn't have to have wires and stuff everywhere yeah that was cool and i actually i really really like that because in all of these games i always want to be tidier and more organized than i am mm -hmm. and this is basically encouraging you and it's forcing you not to place it on the ground and encouraging you to build a f a floor for your factory um, because that's how you get power. So so you're right. That is the one thing that I really liked about it. I, I don't know if it's unique or not, but it it felt unique to me. Uh, so, yeah. So I stopped playing that after about seven or eight hours. It, it's really frustrating because it feels like they have put together. Th they've done a great job of putting together this game. They have just not made a unique game. And that's mm. that's upsetting. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I hopped over to another game that hit early access, I believe, a couple weeks ago, uh, Kit Hack Model Club. So this is from uh, one of the developers of Kerbal Space Program. And um, this used to be called something else. I forget what it was, but it was just model planes. But now they've expanded it to model boats and model cars. And um, I played around with it a little bit. It is doing some unique stuff where basically like you're on this island map. It's almost like pilot wings, right? Like you're on this island map and people are giving you challenges, right? So like one of the challenges was like, you know, uh, there's these like eight big rings in the sky and you need to build a model plane that you can fly through all the rings, right? And it's cool because you go in the workshop and you craft the the, the model and mm -hmm. then you, you, you go into the world with the model, but, but like you're literally like walking around with a remote, can, like a remote, control in, in one hand and then you like have to go to the model and depending on the model you have to like literally like pick it up and then turn the engine on and then raise the controls and throw the plane <laughs> so it's this it's this really cool like like diegetic system where it's like no you don't just spawn into the world and you are the vehicle etc <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that but you you get this feeling of like oh i gotta go pick the boat up oh i have to take the boat to the water and put the boat in the water and it's really cool um unfortunately I've played it for an hour or two and their build system is is not good. It's mm, damn like it it, it it basically is just that it's a bit too fiddly. It's very similar to Kerbal build system. It's a bit too fiddly. But the main problem I have is it feels like the stock parts they have that you build stuff out of is are just shit, right? Mm. Like I tried to build a rocket or a plane and it's it, <sighs> Let me put it this way. Uh, Kerbal Space Program 1 is all about stock parts, right? So you have a part. That part is is concrete. It is solid. You can't manipulate that part, right? You put that part in, it stays the same shape and size. Kerbal Space Program 2 introduced um, the idea of like you can put a wing on it, but then you can grab the wing and stretch it and modify its size and its shape, etc. This mm -hmm. game, w which I think is really cool, this game is almost the other side of the spectrum where most of the stock parts expect you to manipulate them. So if you're trying to build a rocket, you're not really just putting down three tubes. You're having to put down some weird object and then stretch it and manipulate oh, it into the shape. I don't and like it's, that. it sucks. Yeah. And it, and it feels like they've added a little bit too much complexity. Like with the boats, I couldn't just slap a motor on the boat. I had to like put the motor in and then I had to like, make a drive shaft to go to a certain mm. part of the boat and be attached and then put a propeller on it. So it really sucks. Cause I, I feel like this game's doing a lot of good stuff, but the core fucking mechanic, which is building stuff is just not there, you know? And mm. that's frustrating. It, well, you've tried this, right? Cause it was, it had I a demo like a year ago. I want to say, Oh, maybe I did. I was going to say, though, that what you're describing is the build mode. That seems like what should be the advanced mode that you just switch it over yeah. to when you're like 45 hours in the game. And there should be like a yeah. simpler mode 
uh, before that. But yeah, I I vague I, I might have played the demo before it was because I don't remember cars and stuff in it. Um, they, they added that. Yeah, they basically like they had the demo. And then they kind of went back to the drawing board. They renamed it and they added in cars and boats. Gotcha. But other than that, it's pretty much the same game. Um, I, so I, I, I really want to like this game, but it has some pretty bad UI UX problems in it. And I'm just not sure they're going to be able to fix those based mm. on what they've built so far. So mm. a little upsetting there. Um, <laughs> okay, so last game I played, right? So bounce between multiple games. Okay, this week. Not liking any of them, even though both Foundry and Kit Hack Model Club should be those should be my fucking games, right? So I'm like, okay, all right. We'll post about Tectonica on Discord. It's it's another factory uh mining survival uh you know automation game. And I'm like, awesome. Boot it up this morning, play it for about an hour. This one immediately, it's like the opposite of Foundry, right? Like it's doing some really cool new stuff. It's very story driven. It's underground. So you have like limited space unless you start digging and mining yourself some more stuff. So it's 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 a really cool game and it's doing a lot of really cool stuff. I'm not enjoying it or or I don't want to play it anymore. And so now I'm at this point where I'm like, fuck, I think I'm <laughs> you guys ever have gaming doldrums where you're like, I want to play a game, but Every fucking game yep. you touch for like a week or two straight, nothing's doing it for you. You guys ever have that? That's when I switch to movies. I just I switch mediums basically until yeah, I yeah, like that's smart. It. But that's, that's smart. Very smart. I never I think, thought about that, Kyle. And I think that's exactly what because like I'll I'll have days where I'm just like, oh, this week I'm just gonna power through these books. Like I, I think yeah. I, I, yeah. that never occurred to me that, but that is literally the pattern of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. always options. <laughs> so I so it's either a gaming doldrum or or the problem is there's an albatross hanging over my neck which is Kingdom Hearts 4. Sorry. <laughs> Homeworld <laughs> Homeworld 3 comes out on Monday. Oh yeah. And I really want to play that. Unless the reviews are absolute dog shit, I'm going to be playing that. So all this stuff I'm playing while thinking about another game like ramping up to yeah yeah and i'm like oh i, I gotta play this i want to play something but it's gotta fit in i gotta be able to drop it and you know and, and and so i'm hoping that's what it is i'm hoping once homeworld 3 comes out i hope it gets some good reviews and i hope i can just dive right in and enjoy the shit out of it so i don't know tune in next week cool nice uh it's funny you say that because i had a similar thing this week which was i was watching uh, some giant bomb exquisite core, which is where they play through XCOM. And I'm like, oh, I really want to play an XCOM game. So I like went over to my computer and I was like, I remember the original XCOMs were in my Steam library. It's like, I want to check out one of those. Like, it's not the same game series. I mean, it's the same game series. It's not the same developers or anything, but I'll check it out. And then I was like, oh, I think they were Ian's and I, we, you, I haven't done your Steam thing on my computer since that Windows wipe. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, I don't have those. So then I was like, oh, Shadowrun, the like reboots of Shadowrun. Um, and so I booted that up. I got to the main screen of Shadowrun and I said, nah, fuck it. And then I just played XCOM Enemy Unknown because that's what I wanted the whole time. I didn't want some imposter. Um, so I played uh, a bunch of XCOM Enemy Unknown, which is the 2013 XCOM reboot. Uh, and I, I named people after all of my friends. Kyle was there. Ian was there. Halucha, Drake, uh, uh, Jake was there, all sorts of people, save data people. It's basically whoever I thought of in the moment. Uh, and then uh, everyone died, and I lost that campaign. Uh, everyone that game sucks. literally died. Uh, so then I, uh, for some reason, the DLC to this game from 2013 is still $30 on Steam. So I bought a Steam oh. code for $1.99 from a different website. And then, I, go, yeah. and then I put that on Steam. And so now I'm playing <laughs> XCOM uh, Enemy Within, which is the rebrand of that first XCOM game, it's much better. It lets you clear out uh, pe people who aren't on your team and have weapons. It lets you do all sorts <laughs> of wonderful things. And I'm doing much better this time. I actually streamed a bit of it yesterday. Uh, Jason was watching and was very impressed, I will say. I only lost one person. It was my wife. And it's because I did the classic <laughs> I was on an angle and I clicked and she ran instead of running into the building she ran through the wall on the ground which is where i actually oh. clicked uh and mm. she got turned into a zombie but in my ca head cannon uh, i never killed her and she survived the airstrike and we brought her back but 
uh, she's so hideous that we had to put her in a suit. Um, so <laughs> she's Wars back. Hell, it's know? it's nice to be married again. Um, so yeah, I'm playing. Yeah, like I said, I'm playing the DLC version. So that DLC adds. Um, it also adds cybernetics and genetic stuff that I haven't quite gotten into yet. Um, uh, Ian, I, you just died. You were my highest ranking person, and you just died. Ow. A car exploded, so at least you died because of that. And I think you and Sibylla died together. So if there's any sort of uh, okay, I'll take uh, it. Meaning you can take from that, uh, it's that. Um, and then uh, it's just been super fun. That game feels really great. It, it you feel like you're on top of the world, and then you you some people show up in one corner you discover that i've noticed you discover the enemy like at the very end of your turn and then they get an extra turn and you're just like fuck like why did i do this like now I, uh, it's just it's a great game it has fantastic pacing uh you got those ufo missions and like abductions to just like get your soldiers uh working out and everything like that and then you got the big uh missions like go assault the enemy base go uh do this and that um fantastic game you may be asking why i didn't play xcom 2 i have recently played xcom 2 and i i just felt like going back to xcom 1 because uh, i had actually never played xcom 1 uh so it's great i love it um so yeah tune in i might stream some more of that tomorrow um bread man died today i'll have to break the news at some point but he's not gonna be happy <laughs> i like he was such it was i was doing so well too very sad <laughs> um well, uh, Ian, uh, my brother, and I are also playing through Planet Crafter uh, two hours at a time, uh, which is super fun because uh, my brother's not available until 10 p.m. Eastern because uh, that's when my nephew goes to bed. So then from 10 p.m. Eastern to midnight, uh, we basically play Planet Crafter until one of us goes, well, I think I'm going to head to bed uh, because it's it's the, the save files local, so we can't just run the server. So... I have to be online yeah. for the save to be there, and then uh, it's also nice. It's it's a terraform. We've talked about this before. It's a terraforming game, so we're slowly terraforming a planet, and like basically every two hour chunk, we get through another terraforming stage, uh, and we like reveal some stuff in the lore. That game has some crazy like cool lore stuff with it. Um, I won't spoil any of it, but discover it at your own leisure. But it is a it is a fun game, and uh, we've been. It's, it's not like Space Engineers, and I had no idea what was going on. Uh, this forces me to understand what's happening, and I, I'm quite enjoying it. Um, and then, uh, finally, I played Crow Country today. Uh, f uh, former uh, Wishlist Spotlight uh, on, on this here local chat. Crow Country is basically uh, PS1 Final Fantasy uh, cutscene, not cutscenes, in-game cutscenes and levels but uh you can play them full three six like you can walk around the environments look around have full camera control uh it's basically tank control style fixed camera uh, uh, but you can and it's in that like uh final fantasy model uh final fantasy 7 ps1 model uh style i guess is what it's called you are a fbi agent mara forest uh investigating a missing persons case at crow country theme park that has been shut down for a couple of years um it's really incredible so far it's very resident evil very puzzle based very walking around uh they do a great thing where they just have like posters up uh with um uh tutorials and stuff like that they did a great thing where you like walk into the first room and it's like oh there's blueprints on the ground oh it's blueprints for a controller and then it just shows you all the controls it's just like oh that's cute uh and all these like little in-game ways of having you figure out what's going on uh it also, when you start the game, it says, hey, do you want to play survival horror or do you want to just walk around this creepy place and nothing will pop out at you and you can just figure out the whole mystery without having enemies on the map? And I think that's super cool. Um, I have been... I, I don't, I, I'm usually okay with it, but I have been jolted enough times and knowing that's an option, I'm like, I wonder if I can switch to that option mid-game. Mid um that would be great my one gripe with it so far is i made it uh so there's save rooms you actually uh uh so the save rooms collect all those vi those tips are in a notebook and then all of the staff memos you find are in a notebook and then you look into the fire and it does this cute little like oh you think there might be hope in that fire or whatever and then it's like oh probably not but then it lets you save um 
And so those are the only points it saves at. So I made it like maybe 15, 20 minutes past that and then died. And then it brought me back to my last save. And I was like, oh, where's auto saves? Like you should save when I enter and exit a room because it like is loading a new room for me to be in. But uh, it didn't quite. But yeah, puzzles so far are fun. The aesthetic and the look of it is incredible. Uh, it's been getting really good reviews, so I'm hoping the story kind of holds up. There is like a weird mystery and like, um, and like a uh, ba background story of like this gold mine in Brazil, and like they're shipping the gold and all this stuff. So it, it's really cool. They they've done a great job of like coalescing it into a good story, and it doesn't quite feel forced. So uh, it kind of looks like. It looks like a like I'm looking at it on Steam and it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Poppy Playtime, like from a oh, yeah, a, like a visual kind of representation. Yeah, like an aesthetic. I can yeah, see that. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's really nailing what it's going for. I'm playing it on the Xbox. I believe it's also on PC and Steam or PC and Steam PS5 and Steam. Uh, I, I think it's only 20 bucks. Is it 20 bucks on Steam? 18 bucks right now. 10 18 bucks. Off. Dang! I should have bought it on the computer. Um, yeah, uh, that's Crow Country, former uh, Wish the Spotlight. They're going to throw that on the box, I heard. Um, so uh, go <laughs> check it out. It's very, very, very fun. Um, wait, why am I pitching it like I Wish the Spotlight? It is fun, though. Uh, enjoy <laughs> it. Okay, that has been the, the video game portion of this year podcast. Now, I, I, I have an inkling. We're going to have a great news week. I, there's so much happy news in the air. I went to AC this weekend. <laughs> Um, I haven't checked the news, so I, here, here we go. Ian, the fun master extreme here over at Subpixel headquarters. Uh, please Ooh. tell us all about the exciting news in this in vibrant video game industry. Well, folks, we've got uh, no way to get around it. We've got two big bad news stories this week. Let's hit them in chronological order. So first up, let me give you the rundown on the Helldivers 2 PSN controversy, and then we'll get our takes. Uh, so essentially, a couple days ago, uh, Helldivers 2 announced that if you're playing on PC, which the majority of Helldivers 2 players are, they will now need to link a PSN account to Steam in order to keep playing on the platform as of June 4th. Uh, that then led to uh, lots of backlash from the community and some good information that, hey, there's a lot of regions around the world where PSN is not available. Uh, so that led to uh, Sony... Uh, delisting the game from 177 regions on Steam, uh, which, to be clear, that game had already been sold in a lot of those regions. Uh, further backlash occurred, and finally uh, they came back and said, quote, we've heard your feedback on the Helldivers 2 account linking update, the May 6 update, which would have required Steam and PlayStation Network account linking for new players and for current players beginning May 30th, will not be moving forward. Uh, so they did at least for now, say we're not going to go forward with that. And then some breaking news today, uh, Ghost of Tsushima on Steam has suddenly been pulled from a whole lot of regions ahead of its a launch, which will have a PlayStation Network requirement, even though the devs have said it won't be required for single player play. So it doesn't feel like this controversy is done. Uh, thoughts from the gentleman? Uh I mean, I was not a fan of it being delisted from so many countries at all. I don't think that inherently uh, forcing an account uh, activation on a game is terrible. Like, I don't think it's like I can I can see from Sony's yeah. perspective. They want those logins. They want to be able to bump up their stats and stuff like that. But in order to do that, if you have to delist it from 100 and well, 140 countries or something like that, um, not worth it at all. 77, 177. That's insane. Yeah. And I can't believe I mean, I'm actually a, a weirdly proud of gamers, which is not something I ever thought I'd be able to say. Um, and I, I think that amidst all the craziness there was such a, a huge backlash enough that sony sony backtrack and it just reminds me so much of when the xbox one was first announced and they were like it's an always online console and everyone was like yeah. fuck you and they were Please like no. it's a never online unless we need it to be <laughs> console so yeah. I, this is a cyclical thing that seems to happen in the gaming industry but yep uh yeah for now for the other side uh in support uh will 
<laughs> yeah, uh, fuck gamers. Uh, Sony's where it's at. Uh, Jim Ryan actually came over and uh, uh, we made love several have a, times today. He's, he's have a, an unemployment he, party. Yeah, we have an unemployment no. party. Uh, a golden parachute and a non-golden parachute. No, he's I a subscriber. I dance and he, he throws money at me. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I just think, listen, folks, I think... Uh, I, I agree with you, Kyle. I don't think there's anything wrong with making people sign up for your shitty service. Uh, it's a business tactic. It worked for Rockstar Social Network, and it worked for EA. Um, yeah. Did it, though? No, I, that's the other thing. Not really. Um, but also, if it's, I think the shitty part is them suddenly enforcing it because the game took off and they need to boost their yes. PSN account numbers yeah. when they yeah. didn't, like, if they had faith in this game from the beginning and required that, that'd be one di different thing, but also it, this whole thing showed a glaring hole in the fact that they were selling games in a region and trying to enforce a thing so, like, if this hadn't happened yeah. and Ghost of Tsushima came out would there suddenly be all these people who couldn't have played the game, uh, you know, in all these yes. regions? So, who had like, purchased and could not play. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's the other uh, part. So, I mean, I think it's great on Steam for doing the uh, the refunds, the refunds and stuff uh, for yep. all that uh, and taking and all that stuff. So, you know, fuck you, Sony. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to be to yeah. to be clear, I don't think it's a, a a good idea to do that i'm just like it's within sony's rights to, oh, yeah, act, to yeah. ask for a login yeah. like i think it's stupid but i get why they want to do it from a business perspective but not at the expense of and especially you had people you had people on twitter who were like it says it in the steam page it says that it's it like may require whatever and like i was like why are you defending this like massive corporation <laughs> yeah. from, from like i don't I'm understand sure what the yeah yeah but I, I feel like for me i i like you guys are totally right uh, for me, it's like I can 100 percent see myself in that meeting where some executive comes in and says, why do we have like half a million people playing on PC, but they're not PSN registered? Like we need to get them in. Let's force them to sign up. And, you know, one or two people are probably like, "Nah, not a good idea. And the guy's like, no, that's half a million numbers right there. We have to boost them. And, yeah. and I think you're right, Kyle. It's it's not a terrible idea and it's within their right. It's the way that they rolled it out after the fact without consideration for the region problem and, and uh, you know i'll steal this from twitter i saw several people saw, uh, put it put it on twitter which is like there was a very simple way for them to do this properly which was to not make it mandatory yeah. but to give incentives for signing up it's yes. like here, here's a free cloak yep. here's a free thousand super credits all you have to do is link your psn they would yep. have had half a million fucking people sign up in a day it's so easy they, yeah, they just completely fucked up the rollout on this, and and they and they sat on it for several days, and uh, you know it was it was really interesting to see Arrowhead Studios basically come out pretty strongly and say, hey, this is not us, this is being forced on us, and they were like, and to the extent the community manager uh, ended up unfortunately losing their job because they said, you know, hey, we understand why you're upset, you should make your voice heard in Steam reviews and refunds, and they ended up getting fired from the business for that but you know they represent the community and they told the community how to get their voices heard and yeah. it worked it's just it's just an absolutely incredible game an incredible success story and sony just fucks it up like <laughs> yeah. what the fuck are they doing Foot right in just mouth yeah insane i'll tell you who's doing it right though microsoft and <laughs> xbox they're doing it right folks uh <laughs> All right, let's just let's rip the bandaid off. Uh, Microsoft is closing Redfall developer Arcane Austin, Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks, and more in devastating cuts at Bethesda. Uh, they also got rid of Alpha Dog Games, who has done some mobile games, and Roundhouse Studios will be absorbed into Elder Scrolls Online. It sounds like those people will keep their jobs. There's also been some uh, further confirmations that they are handing uh, selective buyout offers to certain employees at Cinemax, which basically means, hey, we're not going to fire you, but if you wanted to quit, we'll give you a really nice severance package, etc. Um, and there's just been a lot of backlash to this. Some sense of explanation from Microsoft. None of it has really made sense. It's just uh, this is this is sad news, right, folks? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ian, I will say famously last week you said if a developer makes a bad game, they deserve to be shut down. So Arcane Austin, yeah. okay in your book. You know, honestly, I'm not sure <laughs> because they did they did 
You know what? I'm going to have to look it up because I don't know the, the state of their... I don't know how much they were involved with Prey and Dishonored. Because if they weren't that much involved and Redfall was their first big solo project, then yeah, fuck that. I think yeah. they, made, yeah, they, they made a terrible they game. Make Prey I think they by made themselves? Prey. I think they, they made, made it by Prey. themselves. That's... They, they were uh, uh, on the side for, for Dishonored. They were, Jake's screaming uh, right now. Helping out, yeah. I'm, I don't <laughs> know. I'm going to look up to confirm. Sure. That's what I'm can we get Jake, Can we get Jake on the phone? Yeah, can, can we call? get Jake Terrio? He's yeah. too busy... Uh, diving into his Looking money up, from the hollow sun. Uh, 2010's Prey. <laughs> In quarters. <laughs> uh, yeah, they did. They they were the main on Prey. So okay. so no, okay. that was not. That was not a justified. <laughs> not a justified canceling of the studio. Good. Good to know. Whereas the, fo <laughs> the folks behind Kerbal Space Program Two, where that's all they did was fucking ruin a franchise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You do your job badly, folks. You don't deserve to have a job. See, Hot actually, take. I guess. <laughs> yeah okay oh man <laughs> does it apply here does it doesn't apply, apply here. here yeah but if you make um, Kerbal Spoons program too fuck you <laughs> yeah this sucks job. this is I mean it's the same thing with what Embracer was doing it's like hey if you're gonna buy a studio maybe invest in the studio like I, I this does feel like the um the way those great redwood trees they just light themselves on fire and it, then it lets them spread to be, grow more or whatever so this feels like yeah. all these uh, microsoft's lighting all these studios on fire so all the people from these studios just go start new indie studios and make incredible games and then one of the big fish will buy them up and then the process will start over again and they'll burn themselves yeah. down um, we'll run out of names eventually uh but yeah we'll get uh, to well cool let me ones. um let me play devil's advocate via matt booty quotes who's the xbox president stinking up the uh, place this is from the Bloomberg article, uh, quote, speaking about the closures more broadly, Booty said that this company's studios had been spread too thin, quote, like peanut butter on bread, end quote, and that leaders across the division had felt understaffed. They decided to close these studios to free up resources elsewhere, which I think kind of plays into your forest analogy, where essentially there were too many studios, the big trees, and not enough employees at any of those studios. And so the the kind of rumor, et cetera, is that essentially they decided they had to shut down some of these studios to get back headcount elsewhere. And it essentially came down to the studios actively working on a project would stay and the studios pitching a new project would go because mm -hmm. the studios actively working on a project were further along the process, which is, is shitty. It's a very tough decision. I think that gives me a tiny, maybe 10 percent of justification of what happened here. It, it at least gives me a, a little bit of sense. Maybe. I don't know. What, what are you feeling, Kyle? I, I mean, I, I get that from a business perspective, for sure. It's like you, there's only so many resources that you can have, even with the money that Microsoft has. However, in the analogy, and this is pulling from Twitter, but in the analogy that Booty said with uh, spreading peanut butter over the bread, Microsoft bought the bread. Like, it's entirely their fault that they have to try and spread that much across that much uh, that much resources across that much bread yeah and i don't think i was actually talking on twitter with bill gardner friend of the channel um about this and i in my mind it's it's very how do i want to put this um <laughs> i i mean microsoft's been known to just throw money at stuff right they they pretty much just are one of the most richest companies in the world. Their gaming division has been suffering, but the overall company has made billions in profits year over year. So it just seems like this would not be happening had not they spent $69 billion buying Activision, right? Yeah. If, if they hadn't spent that much money on a single acquisition, all these other smaller studios that are never going to make anywhere near the profit that Activision is making don't have to make up the, for the fact that they're now in this huge debt because they're buying Activision. And it's not like Microsoft instantly buys Activision and can start printing money. Like there's a whole, they have to decide whether or not they're going to put Call of Duty on Game Pass or, you know, it, they said that it's going to still remain uh, on PlayStation, they need that income. And it, it's all these things where it's like they have to actually develop the fucking games for that, which take time. And I think it's just like a this this wouldn't necessarily have happened had not they spent so much capital of Microsoft's, you know, free uh, treasure money uh, on a single acquisition that then all the rest of them have to immediately start trying to make up for the fact that they're at a loss now. 
So yeah. that's how I see it. But no, and I, I think that's exactly right. And and Ryan McCaffrey at IGN actually just just published a column a couple hours ago that basically said the same thing that yeah. uh, essentially they were given a free pass for a while Xbox because they were a smaller division within Microsoft. It was OK for them to not necessarily turn a profit. And especially during covid years, they were turning a crazy huge profit. But now that Game Pass subscriptions has slowed, hardware revenue has slowed and they now have, you know, 60, 70 billion dollar uh, purchase that they've just made. Uh, essentially, Ryan uh, conjectures that it this came from the board level, from the C-suite and the board level, that it was yeah. not an Xbox Microsoft decision. It was a you need to cut costs immediately because the rest of the company is doing fantastic and your section is not. So we're not going to let you get away with it anymore. Yeah. Um, which which sucks. I, I, I do feel like. We all knew this was coming. This is one of the downsides of mergers and acquisitions is that when all of a sudden you have a bunch of studios under the same roof, there are going to be people doing the same job as each other. Right. You don't yep. need 10 different marketing departments. You don't need 10 different accounting departments. You don't need 10 different IT departments. Right. There is going to be some literal redundancy in positions and people will be let go. This this and, and you know, we were expecting that and it sucks, but it happens. This feels much deeper than that. This feels like we've got to recoup some of our purchase price immediately. And I, I, I'm an Xbox fan. I'm a Microsoft fan. I've kind of been pushing off a lot of these news stories where I'm like, look, some of this stuff happens. They're finding their feet. Me personally, this is the first time that to me, it feels like they're scrambling. It doesn't feel like they've had that up until now. Even with some of the mergers and, and the acquisitions, it felt like they were I don't want to say desperate, but they were making smart moves where they're like, we don't have studios. Let's buy some. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You got money. Buy studios. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is. This feels like desperation. This feels like we got to cut a limb off or we're not going to live. And that's I, that's bad. This is bad for everybody. I remember when they bought Double Fine and everyone was like, great. Like, that's yeah. exactly what Double Fine needs, because they're the size of studio that can utilize, you know, Xbox's. Um, not just their financial backing, but also their distribution networks and everything like it'll be it'll be great for them. But I think it's just reiterating. It's just the size of the acquisition of Activision. That is it's the straw that broke the camel's back. The sixty nine yeah. billion dollar straw that broke the camel's back. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it sucks. And there, there's also um, rumors that this is not the last of the cuts. There's going to be some more cuts coming for Bethesda and Activision, probably under the under Microsoft question didn't when when this was all being hashed out and the ftc was uh right the federal trade commission was going after them yeah. uh or did, what was what was in the eu was going after them i can't remember exactly for for the merger didn't microsoft say that they wouldn't be cutting jobs as a direct result of this merger they they may have i don't explicitly remember that but it's also yeah. They're not. I mean, I, I, I know that. To that yeah, I, I, I know. It's just one of those things. I remember I remember. I'm pretty sure it was when like the emails leaked and, and or not the emails, but like all the presentation stuff leaked. There was something that uh, Phil Spencer said of like, you know, we we're, we're not we're, the or the uh -huh. FTC made a mandate or it's like they couldn't. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I thought that when they acquired Bethesda, there was like a precedent set with that where the FTC was like, you can't immediately turn around and like fire people because you're trying to like gain uh money from the fact that you're in debt from this acquisition now but i don't think they can even do that the ftc I, yeah i I, yeah. I it might not have been the ftc but it was something hold on i'm, I'm gonna um, find it keep going. Uh, I, I do think there I, I do think there is one of the funny things about this is hearing people say hey part of the reason why this is hitting bethesda and zenimax is because you know they did the merger acquisition with them several years ago but they never fully integrated. And so it's not like they're getting you're right. They're getting cut because of the money pressure from the Activision Blizzard deal. But in the back of the head, my mini executive is going. They should have gotten rid of those people years ago, because if if they've been kind of redundant this whole time and not really working out and they never fully collapse the structure as part of the integration, they've just been that that should have been done pretty quickly. So so part of this is. They never completed the Bethesda merger and fully consolidated and trimmed the fat. And yeah. now they've got an even bigger problem with Activision because they've got to trim the fat again and they didn't do it well with Bethesda. So there's definitely going to be some more more layoffs happening for sure.
Yeah, this is just to just to reiterate the point that I was making before. This is from February 7th of this year uh, on Bloomberg. I can only read the first little bit of it because you need a fucking account. But it says yeah. Microsoft Corp's plan to cut 1900 jobs from its video game division contradicts statements the company made to a U.S. court that it would operate the newly acquired Activision Blizzard Inc. independently, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission said. Quote, the reported elimination of thousands of jobs undermines the FTC's ability to order effective relief. Should a court later find that Microsoft Activision Blizzard's acquisition violates the law, the agency said in a letter. And it apparently they're appealing the decision that allowed them to close the deal in the first place last year. That's that's FTC. Yeah, Yeah. because basically it's always been under appeal. They just ran through the timeline that allowed xbox to close the deal yeah it's just part of toothless ftc so you can say whatever you want in front of them and yeah. most of it they can't hold you to it yeah um yeah this sucks a- any other thoughts before we try and close this out with some happy news fuck you microsoft <laughs> wow i'm not there yet i'm more i'm at the what the fuck microsoft that's where i'm at i don't own um, an xbox console so i yeah bring back sega <laughs> guys i'm a little squirrel and instead of nuts, I gather Nintendo Switch rumors. Did you guys know there's a Nintendo Switch 2 coming? It's no. finally been confirmed. No, did you I, guys hear about that? Its life cycle just started. It was only seven years ago. Yeah, I well, actually yeah, thought Nintendo remember, said it, it was the last console they were ever going to make. Yeah. And we just remember? making the Switch. Well, see, you guys haven't been analyzing the directs like I have, where I judge the content of a Nintendo Direct to tell me when the next console will be out. I'm still fucking Mm. pissed at you idiots believing that shit. (laughs) It was true. It's coming out now. It's not true. (laughs) It's not true. true. That was a bad direct, which means new consoles coming. I'm like, folks, there's like three bad directs a year, okay? (laughs) They're not all bangers. Anyways, Uh, bad um, direct, new consoles coming. I wish, because then we would have had, we'd be on Nintendo Switch 7 by now. But anyways, this is from Nintendo Company Limited Limited on Twitter. This is Furukawa, president of Nintendo. (laughs) We will make an announcement about the successor to Nintendo Switch within this fiscal year. It will have been over nine years since we announced the existence of Nintendo Switch back in March 2015. We will be holding a Nintendo Direct this June regarding the Nintendo Switch software lineup for the latter half of 2024. But please be aware that there will be no mention of the Nintendo Switch successor during that presentation. This is the first official confirmation that there is a Nintendo Switch successor coming before April 1st of next year. You guys excited? That was I'm the direct, excited. that tweet. That, that was the direct yeah. we were referencing. So I just... <laughs> fucking 3 a.m. Fucking 3 a.m. East Coast time. I mean, I know they're out of Japan, but 3 a.m. East Coast time. 2 p.m. Japan. <laughs> one tweet. One tweet that basically says, yes, there's a successor to the Nintendo Switch. The release date will be before April of 2025. And we're telling you this so that you don't put too much expectations on the Nintendo Direct, which we are also announcing will happen during the E3 <laughs> time frame of June. It's just a fucking cr- crazy tweet of all this shit that just announces stuff. Anyways, um, let's let's talk about some of the rumors here. I'm going to I'm going to walk through these real quick and then we'll kind of cycle back to whatever you guys uh, would like to focus on. First up, this is from a couple weeks ago, but we didn't touch on it. The uh, Switch 2 will reportedly feature magnetic joy cons. The idea being instead of just using the rail snap uh, click system that they currently use, that it will use a new type of uh, electromagnet that will essentially uh, it's not exactly described but my assumption is that it will use the magnets to align uh, with a new locking system and then so you with a push of the button you can either uh, lock them and unlock them instead of having to do the sliding rails we also have uh somebody in the uh essentially shipping and customs duty uh, data industry i'm not sure if they're in the industry or if they're just weird little snoop nerds but essentially <laughs> they've been tracking shipments between nintendo nvidia and other companies And they've discovered that uh, based on their assumption, and they've been proven right in the past, the console will have 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and internal storage of 256 gigabytes at UFS 3.1, which is a little under uh, NVMe speed. And uh, there's a fantastic tweet here from somebody who basically said that if you don't consider any DLSS, any any type of uh, NVIDIA's uh, weird tech that makes things look better and faster 
Uh, essentially, in handheld mode, it's going to be right above a PS4, and in docked mode, it's going to be just below an Xbox Series X on this console. That's all the rumors so far. How are you guys feeling? Are you excited for this? Um, yeah. I... I like the magnetic Joy Cons because I still remember if you what is it, Crobcat on YouTube has the videos of like people getting their switches and hard locking their oh, Joy Cons yeah, on the sides. The yeah, they put them in the wrong side. So I like the idea of that. I really only care if they're using the magnetic stick drift fixes that they should have been using Hall from the beginning. Sensors, yeah. Um, yeah, or like the go- what Ghoulie Kit, I think, is one of them. Um, if if they're not doing that now after the shit show that they went through the past six, seven years, uh, they're fucking morons. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, pa- as far as power goes, like, I don't really care. Like it, Nintendo's oh, going to be it. the games they're going to. I mean, like, it's okay. nice. Gonna, it's going to be nice to have a big bump. But like, I still. I don't know, man. Nintendo's man, weird. It's... Nintendo's really weird with with. Mm, I feel like it's I mandatory because I, I remember. When Tears of the Kingdom came out, I played that launch morning and and I remember Will was on voice chat with me on that stream. I got like 30 minutes into that game and I was like, "Will, this game is so fucking ugly and it runs so badly. I I was tempted to put it down and wait until the Switch 2. But then Will pointed out, you know, I, I am running docked and I'm sitting close to the TV. But that game, that game regularly fucking drops to 20. It runs at like 720p and it has a shitload of texture and artifacts on it. It's a fantastic game, but it has it's hitting serious graphical ceilings. Mm-hmm. And and then then you can play something like Metroid Dread, which runs fantastic at 60 FPS solid. And it's like. They really they that hardware is old because remember that shit is 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 slow compared to the previous gen yeah Yeah. so so they gotta they gotta bring that shit up it's it's i mean i it's it's you we can say all of that there's they're still making billions of dollars so people don't really yes care yes like that much so so i just i don't know i there it's nice to get a spec bump like for sure um but if this is the the limit to the the rumors that we're getting where it's just magnets on the side and like better ram and better graphics what's like yeah. the killer feature like what's the well, killer app well i think the the thing that hasn't been confirmed well enough for for us to report on it is basically vitality sensor no <laughs> fuck that who cares it's larger that i, I did see that rumor it's it's oh, larger Lord. screen larger screen and higher resolution so people were saying oh. seven to eight inches and 1080p on the handheld and that's that. that's a big fucking bump right there. Yeah. Do you that's think not OLED though? You think so it'll be like still. handheld docked like the Switch? 100%. You think so? 100%. That was, that was that was some of the other rumors was that it it's still going to be cartridges, it will take Switch cartridges and there will be Switch 2 cartridges and all your digital purchases are rolling forward. Hell yeah. yes. For for uh, Kawa said specifically that they're like we have no plans to change any of our physical release um the the sort of structure that we built into the console like moving forward that's going to be the same which i think is great they confirmed i think you just said they confirmed it's nintendo accounts so like they're not making a different type of account that you need to switch to so if this is just an easy rollover then they they've actually done the right thing yeah i i really just want i get what you're saying kyle but for me I want a switch that runs at 60 FPS 1080 in handheld and, and runs at 4K 60 FPS on the TV. And it, it would not take that much of a hardware bump to get their current games to do that, considering how old the switch is. So I, sure. I don't need a huge jump, etc. I don't even necessarily need a switch to if it's just a switch fucking pro and they keep releasing games for it. I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, like I I. It's not that I don't want like better looking games and better running games, but like that's not the default thing that people think about when they think of Nintendo. So if Nintendo doesn't care about it, other than like this is like the one big thing where they're like, oh, we're we're finally like mm-hmm. leveling up to it was like when they made the jump to like HD graphics with the Switch or whatever. It was like, hey, this is yeah. like a, or uh the Wii. What was was the Wii U HD? I can't yeah. remember. Was yes. it 1080i yeah, it was, or something like that? No, it was 1080p. I think it was 1080p. 1080p. Okay. Yeah. Um I still remember buying the the composite plugs for the original Wii. That was fun. Um, yeah, like if Nintendo is is prioritizing it for this round, then I'm wondering if there is going to be a lack of like a real killer feature. If this is just more of a spec bump 
you know, uh, I mean, so I, I think their killer feature could just be better third party support, because I think what the Steam Deck really shows is that there's a shitload of games that run on the Steam Deck, like the Yakuza series, etc., that don't run on the Switch. And all of a sudden you have all these third party AAA games that are now handheld portable games that you never thought of before. So yeah. I, I think their killer feature could just be, hey, these games will now run Xbox Series S games, which means, holy shit, we've got Yakuza on Switch. We've got all these other games that now are just going to port over so much easier that that would make that would make me happy personally, because that's one of the yeah. things where I'm like some of these games I'd love to play on a Switch, but they're not going to hack it. But but I also know they run fine on a Steam Deck. So it's like, what if I could play this on a Switch? <laughs> they won't have to do yeah. the cloud streaming games <laughs> anymore. Yeah. God, fuck. Oh, thank you. Yeah. so bad yeah um, so that's uh that's that's all the news for this week uh wishlist spotlight take it away will yeah i got a wishlist spotlight right for you right now and i just love you know me more than anything i like to build anticipation I'm so excited so, i'm so excited to hear uh, it for what you to be anticipated for is just like my favorite thing in the world it's just ting i'm tingly just thinking about the anticipation that you're going through right now and that anticipation yeah. will be satiated with a game called Zodiac Legend. Folks, Zodiac Legend is a game that I have been following for at least a few seconds now. Um, I have heard about it a lot on Twitter, uh, and it's really big on Steam. Zodiac uh, is Legion it is a turn-based... Legion or Legend? Uh, it's Legion. 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 <laughs> Not Legion. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, it's neither. It's a it's a third <laughs> incorrect one that I've come up with. It's Zodiac Legion. I put it in the notes doc. It's been there for at least a day. Um, it's a turn-based <laughs> tactical RPG uh, where you take command of an arcane chivalric order. Uh, expand your potential in a world of reawakening magic. Uh, it has influences in Heroes of Might and Magic and a few other uh, 90s games. Uh, very tactics-based, very like XCOM uh, meets Dwarf Fortress, sort of. Um, I can sort of see that. Uh, but it's got that, that grid-based style from the 90s that just looks clean and delicious. Um, it is up on Steam. <laughs> Current release date for Q4 2024, so go check that out. Once again, that is Zodiac Legion, L-E-G-I-O-N. Zodiac spelled like uh, the American spelling. The killer. Uh, so go with that. They like the killer. Um, <laughs> well, I have a question for you because I, yes. I know you know the answer. Mm -hmm. This particular style of like it feels like a very fixed locked in ugly angle it's isometric is that isometric it's, that's, what, that's yes, isometric. isometric and and most games nowadays are are either not isometric like they tweak it or they have cheated the sprites to make it not so ugly right correct and games okay. that are this angle but not this harsh people call them isometric they're they are uh, you can call them isometric games but i think yeah, when i think of an isometric game angle. i think of like fallout yeah. one or this like that's i said yeah. like Baldur's gate is isometric but it's 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 not, not really you're turning I, i've yeah. i've definitely called n not traditional isometric yeah. games isometric so i'm guilty but, of that yeah. yeah it's the thing that made me realize that Straight there is something there is a very specific thing called isometric is is messing with cad programs and they mm. have drop downs to be like isometric and then there's like orthometric and there's like different options and they actually do change like perspective and, and scale and how that's displayed and shit. Wow. But there yeah, was, this is this so is nostalgia was, ugly. Is what yeah. This is. And, and I kind of I kind of dig it, though. There was a um, a developer on Twitter who was making some sort of a isometric esque game um, and he did a like a deep dive on how the sprites actually worked because you could go from. Yeah a far zoomed out thing and then zoom in and the sprites would actually like bend like oh. back yeah. to like, and it was really cool. It was, it like was very Link between worlds. Yeah. Where, yeah. where Link is at like a lean back angle. The there, whole time. Um, yeah. Yeah. There've been this Twitter thing. I don't know how much you guys probably get a fair amount of indie stuff on your uh, feeds. The yeah. most of my feed is indie stuff. Indiana Jones. But there's been, yeah. Indiana Jones full nude with a rock hard eight inches of whip. Indianapolis. Um, yeah. Indy 500. It's, it's Harrison Ford at the age. It's coming. Um, a couple weeks, folks. Get excited. Brickyard, no, baby. No, I was going to say, I, there's been this trend going on, which is my indie game and the three influences for it. And it's four pictures. And that's been really great because oh, yeah, I've been scrolling yeah. it. And 
like you'll see a screenshot for a game and you'll be like oh that's beautiful or oh that's hideously <laughs> ugly why would i play that and then you scroll yeah. and you keep moving Ooh. on but when you see a game that looks like anime titties and stuff like that and you're like i'm not that interested in it but then you see like oh my inspiration for this is factorio and like hunt for <laughs> red october and you're like oh <laughs> fuck yeah i'm gonna play this game so it's been this great trend where it's like not normally a game i would go and throw on my wish list but when i see what influences it um I'm like, oh, you know what? I love those games, and then I know if those influenced a game I was making, I would keep this feature, this feature. So let me see, like, what that game's about. So it's been a really neat trend on Twitter. So uh, go support mm. people uh, who uh, who support themselves. Just, uh, just people in general. Yeah, just people in general. Unless they're bad, then don't support them. Um, folks, that's gonna do it for the show folks thank you so much for tuning in i've been your host will crosby joining me this week was the lovely kyle bailey and the cute and adorable ian gibson uh will we, we will 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 be yep yep, 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 yep. Uh, Will will be back. Uh, we will be back on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Kyle, it's the three of us minus Ian plus Jason, and we'll be playing Fired Emblem 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to that after all my XCOM experience. I'm hoping I can transfer all that luck uh, that Jason hates about me right into that game uh, because he was screaming in the XCOM chat at how lucky I was getting on my 25% <laughs> shots. Um, I think that's all we're doing. Quiz Me Baby next week and more local chat. Uh, lots of fun things going on. I uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you gentlemen have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you all. See you all next week. Bye.